Hi, my name is Jan and I'm doing this video for my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, and whoever else wants to listen. Today I'm going to be talking about drying flowers. They're so easy and they're so beautiful. I have a tray here of some that I dried, zinnias and marigolds. Uh, zinnias and these are the marigolds. I had some giant marigolds and these are uh, the marigolds and then zinnias and they turn out so beautiful and we use them I dry them too for uh, we our garden club has we are in the art show at the Frankfurt Library and um, in November and we make Christmas trees uh, wreaths and arrangements tablescapes and uh, just whatever and um, we use a lot of these in in wreaths and like group them together you can you know group the colors together or just we have one lady that always makes beautiful uh, a couple of beautiful wreaths with the dried flowers and she's very ill and so I'm gonna make a couple of wreaths uh, kind of to honor her this this season so uh, to start with, I'm going to do some uh, zinnias, and I've <coughs> cut the stems kind of short. Now, if you want to use these in a flower arrangement, you can. What I do is I attach a glue, a stem, another hard stem from some other flower onto it, and then I've th we've got these green sticks we put on, and then I wrap them with the green tape, and it's real simple. So these flatter ones, and basically all these, can be just put straight down. I've got, I've got the silica gel. It's called silica gel. And you can buy it at Hobby Lobby. And I'm not sure, probably at Michael's too. And you can get it on the internet. Anything on the internet. And I, I like to use shoe boxes. I've got a plastic box back here, but you don't want to put a lid on them because uh, the plastic draws too much moisture. But the, the, um, the shoe boxes, they, I, I really like them. They're my favorites. So what I'm going to do, and I don't know if you can take that off CJ and see here, what I'm going to do is put this face down into the sand. It's called silica gel, but it's like a white sand, but it's got silica stuff in it. And I put them straight down in there and then I will cover them and I stick these stems up now these aren't as easy to do but they will dry they will dry sticking in the sand but like the flatter ones do better but it's okay look at that one I think that's so pretty I mean Zinnias are probably one of the most prolific flowers there is, and I, I planted them next to my tomatoes, and I had marigolds, and I guess I didn't realize they're giants. They're, the plants are probably three to four feet high, <laughs> but that's all right. I've got plenty of tomatoes, beautiful tomatoes actually, but they're winding down see that big orange zinnia zinnias just keep blooming though they you tr the more you trim them the more the more they bloom they're an easy flower see that one I'm gonna put that flat in there then what I do is take some gel and just pour it over Make sure they're down in there, and then you pour it over. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna kinda shake the box so it, that they can get it can get around all the all the petals because you want it to dry nicely and okay, I'll just that and then I'll finish that later. This is called um, 
artemisia. It's a, it's not wormwood artemisia, it's a variegated artemisia, very invasive, but it's beautiful. I have to dig out a whole bunch beside it every year, but I use it in, um, when it dries, I use it in Christmas trees to add to, you know, poke it in to add depth to the, to the trees. And I usually, um, I'm going to show you how I, how I dry them. I put a rubber band around, there's three on here, there's three, but um, it's better to do it like two or four. And then I take, I've got a drying rack in the garage, plus I use my <laughs> my uh, door things that come out, I use them. I, I have stuff all over hanging out there. And then when these dry, you can even use, whoops, you can even use um, these little pieces like you can pull them off and use them in flower arrangements too. So that's the way I do that. And it's so easy. Just put a rubber band around them, stick them in, and then hang them across. So I'm going to put that there. And then uh, my hydrangeas. Okay, here's one of my beautiful um, macrophyllas. They only bloom on old wood, so usually you don't get blooms to the top because before they start to grow you usually get a freeze and it freezes them but they they usually come out by the bottom this year i had a lot of them because we had some pretty nice weather we did have a freeze but but uh, i had a lot of more down by around the bottom i think because we had a rain, lot of rain too but i just cut them off short put them in about that much water and i'm going to put them in a dark place and they will dry like that they might lose a little of their color, but I use a little of um, that designer paint and just spray a little bit in the air and pull it out. I do that outside though. Spray it and then pull it through and it'll get a little bit of green or burgundy or whatever color you want on it. Let me get another one over here. Here's another one. Here's another one. And when you pick these, don't pick long stems because, uh, I mean, you could, you pick them down to, uh, you cut them off down to the, the next node. Well, there's leaves coming out here, but down to the next node where you see these little nodes coming out, that's, they're setting their buds for next year. So you don't want to cut them off. So I, I do, I cut this one a little longer because it didn't have a thing, but then I want it in the water a little bit. See, it's gonna lean over, but that's all right if it leans. That's all right, that's another one. And they're just beautiful. I had one here. Uh, this one is from, uh, it's called, this one is called White Adore, and they bloomed white, and then they turned green, and uh, think it's it's pretty ready I'm gonna kind of do an experiment this is the first year I've had these and I'm gonna see how it dries it'll it'll dry it's maybe not quite ready but I think it'll be fine let me see here but these are my favorites and I I use a lot of these and when I use them in wreaths I take you see here it's got all these groups of flowers and I usually take one or two and put it in a in a part of the wreath and then you can you can use them you can use like there could be like five different bunches there you could use you don't put the one whole big thing on the wreath you use it in sections so I'll kind of demonstrate that later how to do a wreath but so that's the macrophylla type and I think they're gorgeous. Uh, did I show you the dried ones? I did. Okay, they're so pretty. Look at that one. Oh well, okay. I've got a um, 
Japanese anemone here, and these can be dried. What you do is put them face down in the silica sand and then just cover them up. And what I've done before is cut these little flowers off. And I made a couple little, I had little vases about like that and then made little bouquets in the vases. They're pretty, but um, the, the bees love these. And they're a fall flower. They don't, they don't start blooming until August, and they're blooming now. So that's what you, anything that's flat, you can put flat down. And even this, this one I'll put flat down. It's pretty big, but I'll put it flat down. Otherwise you have to put it straight like this and then just keep adding to. Okay, this is in the amaranth family and I'm going to just put a, um, put a rubber band around it and put it on a hanger because I'll have a lot more of these to, to dry. <clears throat> they're not quite, they're just about ready. Um, these, uh, of course, these are the big limelights and they can be hung, but they're starting to dry, so they can just go right in a vase. But, but you can rubber band these together and hang them over a, or a, a, put a rope across in your garage or basement and just hang them across and they'll dry. But they also will just dry in a vase. Some of them aren't quite ready yet, but they'll be all right, they'll dry. And then, and that's the limelight. And I think I had a couple, the little, I think I put little limelights in here. Yeah, these are, I've got a, I've got a little limelight this year and it's full of blooms. And I picked some of those. And these, these here just dried on the, the bush. And they are pinky winkies, these are. And they're really pretty, they're really pretty. And they're basically dry. In fact, some of them are, they have a little brown on them, but that, that gives them a little character. But they're pretty. And that's a, a, this is a nice bush. I think a pinky winky can get up to six foot. I keep it trimmed to about four. So let me see those, CJ. Yeah, these are from the little limelight. They're just little hydrangeas and they're, they're real nice. And the little limelight, if you don't have space for a, a big limelight, which can get six to eight feet and you even trim it in the spring to about, you can trim it to like three, four feet and boy, and it just grows and it can grow six to eight feet and it just covered with blooms. They're beautiful. If you've got room for a limelight, that would be my first choice. And then the little limelight, I think gets three to four feet high and three to four feet wide and you'll trim it off in the spring and, um, uh, it'll it'll just grow and you'll get this type of bloom on it and I just bought my little limelight this summer and it was covered with blooms when I bought it and it's just flourishing out there where I put it so very pretty I think this is from my big limelight and you can get little blooms too on the big limelight so that is really, oh, I wanted to show you about the how to dry a dahlia. And then the ones I dried this summer didn't turn out quite as well. These I, I probably dried, dried five or six years ago and I need to spray them a little bit, but they're pretty and I keep them on my bookshelves in my bedroom. Then this one, I know I dried seven, eight years ago it's it's a beautiful this this style peony it was easy to dry and I put it down in the silica gel and just put uh, sprinkled it over until it was covered and you leave them in there probably 
five days maybe and there it is and I keep that in my china closet in my great room and that was probably six seven years ago I mean it's beautiful it just stays that way so you you can you can dry anything the only thing I tried to dry once was um, a, um, a geranium but and but you have to take the little flower off and dry it or they're better to press little flowers but they don't if you took a geranium and put it in silica gel and tried to get it all covered I I tried it once it did not work so this is one of my big white dahlias I'm gonna try to I'm gonna dry it and what you do you put it down in the silica gel and you push it all up around the bottom I don't know if you can see that CJ can you and then I'm gonna just lift this whoops okay you might not be able to do this all at once but you start sprinkling the silica gel in it and I know I had a friend once and she was doing one and she just she kept it in the silica gel and every time she went past she put a little more on it she didn't have time to really mess with it but today I'm gonna keep going and and I'll just keep messing with it this evening and I'll finally get it covered but it has it'll have to be covered to dry but it's it's a big dahlia and I'm not sure I think it'll turn a little um, it'll turn a little browner but it should be pretty I'm looking forward to it so we'll see but yes dahlias can be dried it's better to have a smaller one but and I do have smaller ones but but um, this big white one I thought I'm gonna try to dry it nice so they're so pretty I used one in a bouquet uh, the 4th of September my granddaughter in Evansville got married and I did the flowers for her wedding and I took one down actually I had an umbrella over this this white dahlia for oh over a week because I was afraid that it would come clear out you know before I, I left on Tuesday before Saturday for the wedding and uh, it it was okay by the wedding day but I used it um, I used it in a flower arrangement because it was too I couldn't get it in her bouquet I didn't have a long enough stem so but this is basically how you dry flowers now you can dry them in the microwave I have um, you can get a cheap um, d uh, kitty litter and put it in a dish and put some in the bottom put your flour in there and you can dry them that way and um, uh, there's there's really all kinds of ways you can dry mostly a lot of things I just dry air dry uh, these peonies I dried I usually pick some peonies put them in a little bit of water in my refrigerator in the garage to the back and just leave them in there for all summer and they'll dry and they'll dry so and I know um, my sister once she had some peonies she just left them in the vase and all summer and out in her room and her living room and uh, they dried they'll they'll dry but uh, you just have to kind of be patient with them but uh, there's just anything can be dried like I said except the geranium I but any almost anything can be dried but I'm gonna be picking some coxcomb here soon and uh, it's basically it'll it'll dry nice coxcomb's beautiful but um, anyhow I think that's probably it but good luck on your drying flowers and it's very easy and beautiful and uh, but if you get some silica gel you're all set but like I said if you do it in a plastic container don't put the lid on because any any moisture that's in it'll just it'll make the flower icky <laughs> believe me it doesn't work 
I know a couple people that put them in cookie tins, but I like the shoe boxes because the, 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 the cardboard absorbs the, any moisture, plus the silica gel does too. So, but listen, I'll see you later and thank you very much.